What's everyone's favorite junk food? What are we talking about here? Like gummy bears or, fr- or like fried chicken? <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or are we talking about like when I'll go to McDonald's and order a six piece chicken oh, nugget yeah. and oh, eat no. three of them and then put the other three on my cheeseburger? <laughs> My name is Melissa Rodriguez. I'm the executive chef at Del Posto in New York City. Del Posto is a very large four-star Italian restaurant owned by Mario Batali and Lydia and Joe Bastianich. Mario and Lydia are both super supportive. The amount of knowledge that the two of them have combined is incredible. We try to make everyone's experience specific to them. We focus on tailoring to what people want without jeopardizing the integrity of the food and the service. You can do antipasti, a choice of pastas, and then you have a choice of segundi, so you have meat and fish. Like any restaurant, it's a lot of moving pieces, but the space factor multiplies those pieces by a lot. I manage a team of like 40 cooks. That can be very challenging sometimes, but I really enjoy it. This is our duft farfalle. The filling is beet, the sauce is butter, pistachio, Meyer lemon. I started cooking because my mom was working full time and um, me and my little sister were home by ourselves and I was like 12. Cooking was fun and I liked that I had an outlet. I went to CIA out of high school and began my professional career. And then I did catering, which was great because I ended up functioning really well in high demand, high pressure situations. I came here because my friend was a chef de cuisine and he was in need of staff. I ended up taking a full-time job. I can't really honestly say that I walked in here and was like, yeah, I will be the executive chef here. I walked in here and I was like, wow, I have a lot to learn. Now we're making our Wagyu beef carpaccio. We're gonna brush it with olive oil. This is just a little salsa verde. And we have this little cracker called chape. This is a Meyer lemon zabione. And that's it. A place like this does not run because of one person, it runs because of many people. Oh yeah, you've never been, it's so good. Everyone that we, we went out with last night, I've known for 13 years, 14 years. Francis Derby is a very old friend of mine. And the winner of tonight's karaoke competition, I didn't even know I was competing. They were like, Francis Derby, I was like, what? I've known Matt Rudofker since he's like, just out of high school. Super, super young and really like, Just focus. When we were cooks, everyone like lived together because no one could afford an apartment. (laughs) Chad Browse just opened the restaurant at the Park Hyatt. So we're gonna head to Danielle. I think it's my favorite place to go have like a glass of champagne. I worked at Danielle for five years. I kind of feel like they're like my extended restaurant family. How you doing? Good? Great. How are you doing? Ciao. My friend Pierre is there to greet us. He's a fun guy. I like Pierre a lot. There's an upper lounge and you can dine there, which is my favorite place to go if I want to do something fun and upscale, but not like crazy. I didn't know if uh, Danielle would be there or not, and he was, which is a super nice surprise. Hello, hello. Hello, Hello, Chef. How are you? It's very natural for him to like grab your hand and like parade you through the kitchen, which is like exactly what happened. Everybody, can we do a picture with uh, Melissa and Chad? I have fond memory of Melissa working with us at Danielle. She has always been an amazing, amazing cook, very consistent, very precise. I'm shy and you know, I don't really love having my picture taken and that kind of thing. And when I used to work there, I feel like he almost did it on purpose because he knew it was, I felt tortured, but he would always be like, Melissa, come here, take a picture with me. Melissa is scared because she's afraid we're gonna give her another white again. <laughs> come back on the line. That's the easy part. Having your picture taken is like the hard part. 
<laughs> We're not going to overstuff you, but a uh, few things. I was expecting just to have like little canapé um, and a glass of champagne, and that was it. And of course, I don't know why I'm so stupid to think that that was going to be it. We started with champagne, which is my favorite thing to drink. That's the best. They send out this little wooden plank. On the left was a crab with curry. In the middle was a beet puree. And then on the right was a tuna. Really delicate, very pretty. Miniature baguette, a three seed roll, and a buckwheat sour dip. Can I have a baguette? And then we had the beef with like a carrot, milfoy. We had an uni dish that was really amazing with langoustine. I think I'm in love with this uni. Foie gras is delicious and I love it, but it's not something I eat very often. They sear and they, they do a flambe with grappa. That was super elegant. I love like tableside stuff. I think it's just really fun and kind of old school. I wish people weren't so scared to do it. So I guess we're, we're gonna go. So we're gonna go eat some pizza. We're headed to Raza. Raza's this really awesome pizza place in Jersey City. So what's the story again? He he wasn't a cook. No. Mm -hmm. He like went to Italy, fell in love with pizza, and then he opened this place a few years later. Raza is just like a neighborhood pizza place. I live in Jersey City and it's my favorite place to go. Dan Reischer, who owns it, works with a lot of different farmers, and he's really good about sourcing, and he takes it seriously. We opened Rots in 2012. We serve wood-fired pizza, not Neapolitan wood-fired pizza. We use American wheat, we use American tomatoes. So we just break every rule, and for good reason. An Italian in Italy would never use a product from the United States. They would use a product from somewhere in their region. Thanks for having your us. your first time to Jersey City? No, 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 not, not by any means, but my first time here for sure. I know that we definitely have to do like meatballs and bread and butter. Bread and butter, it's never like something I think about, but when you go there, it's so delicious. The butter is actually made in house. Also, we get grass fed cow cream from Pennsylvania. We had this buffalo milk ricotta with mortadella that was super awesome. We had a salad of some greens and some strawberries and pine nuts. The strawberries came from his neighbor, which is super awesome. We had meatballs, which are so good. And the best thing about the meatballs is they put a lot of sauce and the sauce is super delicious. It smells amazing. That's a damn good meatball. He sent out a white pizza with hazelnuts and margarita with buffalo milk mozzarella and basil and tomato. So this is the bufala pizza, which is a variation on the margarita. This has water buffalo milk mozzarella cheese that's made here in New Jersey. California tomatoes, basil from here. It's fucking good, right? He sent out a pepperoni pizza. Really good pepperoni makes like a really big difference. <laughs> and then asparagus pizza with onions and ricotta. But it's super delicious. You want to eat most of it, but your body only has so much capacity. Now my friends will actually come to Jersey City. Have fun tonight. Yeah. It's a late night I, for I have you. to go drink somewhere, and then I have to go cook. We left New Jersey. We went back into the city. We used to. We would get out of work at Danielle, go to Subway Bar because it was right next to the 59th Street Subway. Yeah. 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 Have three or four beers there. Go back to Astoria, finish off the night at Doyle's. Well, we mainly went to go see Barry at Doyle's. Barry. Because he yeah. shut the- Because he was a madman. <laughs> he'd shut the things, uh, gates, kind of like the, they have like that lock us in there and like yeah. smoke cigarettes. And... and then he would go to sleep in the fucking janitor's closet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm too old for that shit now. <laughs> the Rusty Knot is a bar. It's on the West Side Highway. It feels like your parents' 70s, like, boat cabin. <laughs> Victor used to be a cook. He and I and Chad were all roommates at one point. How you doing? You got two. See you. 
How are you? I ordered them in Manhattan, and he sent Matt and Chad this giant, like, flaming Moscow mule. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I look at stuff like that, and I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm going to be super hungover. He's got a lot of sugar. Remember when we had that party, and the guy vomited everywhere? Yes. What was the reason for the party? The reason for the party was I had worked like 800 yes. doubles in a row. <laughs> <laughs> The stop at the resting net was super quick. I definitely feel like none of us overdid it. Very cautious to be uh, videotaped and drunk. We're going to Del Posto and we'll be there in literally two seconds. Yeah. You can walk from here to there. <laughs> Dinner service was still happening, so we went downstairs to our banquet kitchen. We set up a bunch of cutting boards and went into the produce walk-in and was like, whatever you guys want to use and everyone's got to make a frittata. My thought process was that like, we have 20 cooks that are going to come downstairs and eat. If it's just me making a frittata, we're going to be here all night. Chad like rated our cheese and charcuterie and just went for it. I feel like Chad has the most expensive one. <laughs> Millionaire's frittata. Francis made mortadella and Brussels sprouts and feta cheese. Mine was a matruchana, so I did tomato and garlic and pecorino and guanciale. Matt made mushrooms and his was like the pseudo vegetarian one. Only he like stole the rendered pork fat from my guanciale. If you don't eat pork, we don't have anything for you. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> it's fun to hang out and eat frittata after service.